Hello and welcome to the Futurist blog. I am Ines Sali, your tour guide to the future. And today we have our first guest, Gennady Stolarov, who is going to tell us about the future of the U.S. Transhumanist Party in the American politics. Hello, Gennady. Are you ready for my questions? Yes, indeed, Anessa. It's good to speak with you. Yeah, likewise. So I love your lab coat, by the way. Where can I get one like that? <laughs> well, this lab coat was provided to me by the SENS Research Foundation, which is mm -hmm. one of the leading organizations advocating for life extension and rejuvenation biotechnology today. This was a special gift from the SENS Research Foundation that I got after donating to the Mito Mouse fundraiser that was held in 2019. So in the future, when the SENS Research Foundation organizes additional fundraisers for research projects, this may be uh, another opportunity to get such a lab coat. Well, that's indeed is very honorable. Okay, that's awesome. So let's talk about politics now, because that's our focus for today. The 2020 US presidential elections were unprecedented, as we all know, and we're still witnessing Trump's campaign legal challenges. So Gennady, how would you feel about the presidential race outcome and how could it impact potentially the future of the Transhumanist Party? I think it's evident that by the time the Electoral College meets on December 14th, Joe Biden will be established as the winner of this election. It is quite instructive to note how quickly courts are rejecting the various challenges posed by the Trump campaign, because I think the Trump campaign right now is just playing for time, trying to inject uncertainty, uh, despite the fact that clearly Trump has not prevailed in either the popular vote or the vote in the crucial battleground state. I do think there's a risk that some of these protracted challenges could sow greater divisions in the American public and create various interpretations as to what the outcomes were. But ultimately, I think this election outcome will be settled in favor of Joe Biden. Now, what this portends for transhumanists depends on whether Joe Biden governs as the unity candidate that he has presented himself as being, whether he's actually willing to hear ideas from people who didn't vote for him. And if that's the case, there may be room for collaboration on issues such as cancer research and medical uh, funding more generally, because those are areas where broad agreement across political parties could be attained. Now, how do you see the room for collaboration in there when it comes to uh, admitting the U.S. Transhumanist Party um, as a third major party in politics? Like, do you think if Joe Biden finally becomes a president, it will actually help the Transhumanist Party to become one? Well, like, I... I think it will take some time and effort to build up the infrastructure for both advocacy and uh, certain structural reforms in the system to make that happen. And that would need to be the case whether a Republican or a Democrat is president. The problem occurs at the level of many states, which have highly restrictive ballot access requirements, where sometimes one needs to get uh, anywhere from thousands to hundreds of thousands of signatures by hand in order to get on the ballot. And that's a more formidable obstacle than the policies of any given president. I think in terms of communicating with any administration, we would have an easier time at that. The key is to persuade any party in power of the importance of allowing for genuine competition and for people to genuinely have a choice. Because really, what are they afraid of? Right. Yeah. Now, we all know that Charlie Kim was a Transhumanist Party presidential candidate this year, like some media sources, sources actually featured him. And uh, what goals do you think has the party accomplished during the Cam Parish campaign? Yes, the Cam Parish campaign, I think, did great work at educating the public about transhumanist ideas, about the promise of emerging technologies and work on life extension research in particular. Both Charlie Cam and Liz Parrish have been involved in this area for many years. And so they have direct experience that they can speak to about key ideas within the transhumanist movement and how a focus on science, health, and technology can transform American politics. 
as you mentioned, they were involved in many media interviews. We also held our own U.S. Transhumanist Party virtual enlightenment salons once every week, where we invited guests who were experts in various fields to delve into those fields in depth. And I think we really illustrated the connection between policy and science and technology in a way that has not been emphasized in American politics nearly to the same extent. So I think we were successful in putting forward a different, more constructive vision of American politics that inspired many people, not just in the United States, but across the globe. Now, going back to the U.S. elections, the 2020 elections, the vote count was super long, and there's still recount going on in some states, as we know. And some, some people say that we need a more progressive electronic voting system. Now, Gennady, what's the Transhumanist Party's suggestion regarding this upgrade? Um, would you actually cancel the paper ballots altogether and replace them with e-voting? Uh, how would you go about that issue? Well, the Transhumanist Party has some experience with fully electronic voting within our own internal election. And I believe it can work extremely well, even using common office technologies of today, uh, which is what we have used in our internal ballot. The key is to have a system that combines both anonymity and verifiability. And the way we do that is we assign a random numerical ID to each voter. And the voter would know this ID, but the public would not. And when we publish the vote result, we can publish them with this ID associated with the individual vote so that anyone who is concerned about whether or not their vote was counted could look it up and see their ID and see that their vote was registered the way they intended. And this would increase their confidence in the system. This is more secure than paper ballots. Paper ballots can be lost. Uh, they can be manipulated. And even though there are many measures uh, of election security undertaken in the United States today, uh, as we have seen uh, with the recent legal challenges, there are still some irregularities here and there. So a blockchain-based voting system is a more technically advanced implementation where both the anonymity and the transparency of the entire ledger of transactions, so to speak, uh, are built in. So you can have uh, an electronic voting system implemented via blockchain, and you could have people vote via apps from the comfort of their home. Now, would we abolish paper ballots altogether? Probably not initially, because there may still be people who are not technologically savvy, who are not used to electronic voting, who do not trust it for some reason. And it's better to allow multiple options in order to assuage those concerns. Over time, I think paper ballots will be seen as more of a historical relic. The proportion of the population using them will dwindle, and it may be possible to phase them out eventually, but uh, we would not wish to do that uh, until there was a broad public consensus that electronic voting. Yeah, yeah that's a long-term process. Now, it seems like you have a very creative and a democratic approach about the ballots and the e-voting, and I like that. now. How costly do you think it will be to replace paper ballots with e-voting e altogether? Well, I think it depends on the system and on the objectives and intentions of the people involved. The U.S. Transhumanist Party right now is an all-volunteer organization, so we can implement an e-voting approach at zero monetary cost, but using a lot of time and effort of our volunteers. In a system that is scaled up to the broader population, probably some sorts of contractors would be involved. And having had some experience with IT contractors, I know that they vary significantly in the terms that they impose. But most of the costs would be compensation for people's labor. And I would rather that some enterprising uh, startup with more of a humanitarian orientation or a nonprofit organization that just wants to make the world a better place is involved in this rather than an established IT contractor, uh, which may uh, impose rather onerous terms on its clients, the various jurisdictions. So I think the cost could vary, but it would be a lot lower than many, many governments. You were watching The Futurist Block. 
If you like this episode, please click the like button and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Stay tuned, the future is already here.